Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. By the video title, you know what this video is about. Um, before I get to this video about the Steelers dominating and the defense dominating and the Steelers big time win on Monday Night Football, I want to give, give a little um, condolences to Nick Chubb. Nick Chubb, they say is probably is a uh, season ending knee injury. He's a very good player. Very good player, amazing player like I mentioned before on the preview. He's a great player. He goes out there and play hard. And off the field, he's a nice guy, too. If you've seen him off the field, see him in his interviews and see what he does for the communities. Um, and like, he does a lot of great things. A lot of great things. A great guy. Um, he's the leader of that team. One of the leaders of the team. The best player on that team as well. Best player on offense of that team as well. And he just, he's just a hard-nosed player. A player you can root for. A guy you can root for. So if he's out for the season, that right there is tough. So prayers up to Nick Chubb. And a moment of silence. Now. Let's get into the game. Let's get into the game. This game right here had a lot of injuries. We've seen a lot of players went down. Minka went down with an injury. Um, I guess he, he like kind of like he knocked the wind out himself. He, like he was like couldn't breathe a little bit. Like on if he was throwing up or something. He went down with an injury. We've seen Garner go down with an injury. A lot of players went down with an injury. Miles Garrett hurt his leg a little bit too. So hopefully all those guys are good. Those are some great players. Well, I said Gunner, not Gunner. But the other guy, Minka Minka, you know, um, Miles Garrett, those guys are some great players. And, you know, hopefully they um recover well. I know Miles Garrett was still in the game after the injury happened, but like he like his, his ankle was tweaked up, he was limping around and stuff. So we're gonna see how things pan out. But the turf field, they gotta address that turf field. A lot, if you like saw the replay on a lot of those plays. A lot of guys kind of stopped. They were trying to stop, and they kind of got stuck and like slipped and fell down and kind of messed their ankle up and like twisted it up. Newsom had an injury as well, so hopefully they address that turf field. But for the game, this game right here. Was absolutely crazy. The Steelers went out there, and it started off crazy. The first, the first play, one of the first plays, um, Deshaun Watson throwing it to the left side, it gets tips up in the air, and then you see um, Mika Fitzpatrick had it in both hands. He about to pick six at first. He had it about to take off, and then somebody ran into him and knocked it out of his hands. Alex Highsmith high pointed it, got to the edge, and ran and took it to the end zone for the first seven points. And then we've seen some other things happen, some other crazy stuff happen, and then the Browns. Um, get the ball back, and they put some points on the board, and they and they um somehow get because they keep the field goal to first, and they somehow got it to eleven to seven, and then you seen some other wacky crazy stuff happen. Um, George Pickens on a big time play across the middle, getting there, taking it to the house. You just seen a lot of craziness happen. And then another crazy thing happened too as well in the fourth quarter. Alex Highsmith coming off the edge, strip sack, TJ Wide recovered it for his first first ever touchdown in his eight year career with the Steelers. He also broke the sack record, most sacks in Steelers franchise history. Now, if they recorded sacks back then for the majority of Mean Joe Green career, he probably had the record on um, by 120 or something. But Jerry Wyatt holds the record at just the age of 28, and he did it in 90 less games than Jerry Harrison. That's right there is a crazy stat, and that's what show you the greatness of TJ Wyatt. But this game right here was all won on the back of the defenses. The offense went out there and scored seven points. And a lot of long field goals to Basel. Basel had to boot some 50 yarders, 55 yard field goals um, to get some points on the boards for us too as well. But seven points on that busted coverage and George Pickens getting wide open and just taking it to the house as well. A little move, you know, juking the safety out the way. But the Steelers' offense is the struggle right now. Um, Matt Canada hasn't done a good job. Hasn't done a good job. I know some of the execution, some play calling, and I've been the same. Not been too good too as well on occasionally. But Matt Canada, the play calling, it kind of messes up. Especially that one play, you see the drive before we get the ball back to the Browns before um, we get to stop on them and, like, you know, in the game and stuff. We could have really st had the ball on offense, got the first down. We've seen on the third and one, instead of him hit that big formation out there, he had Darnell Washington, all these guys out there, just run the ball with Najee Harris. And Najee Harris just run the ball down the middle with Najee's just one yard or hand it off to Connor Hayward or somebody. He take it all fancy and get a little trickery in the mix. And he um tried to get Kenny Pickett to do a read option. He caught it. He, he came back with it and got boomed. Um, it was just a bad play call. And it kind of messed the flow of the game. You see them jet sweeps just messed the play, flow of the game up. And it's causing some bad things and stuff. So it's just been awful for him. So basically the offense is only averaging, because they count the field goals to his points. So the offense only averaging, you know, they scored 13 points. They, throw, they scored 13. The defense scored 14 points. You know, 14 points for the defense. Alex Highsmith. And TJ Wide defensive touchdowns. Like I mentioned on a stream, if you guys are watching the live stream, our defense is our best offense for some reason, which is, should not be the case. I, I love the defense scoring points. Don't get me wrong. But imagine the defense scoring points and the offense scoring points at the same time. And we get it going. We're going to be blowing teams out. But for some reason, they can't get it clicking. 
he can get it going. The run game kind of heated up a little bit in the second half. We've seen Najee Harris get some big-time runs. We've seen Jenna Warren get some runs. But they kind of just stay inconsistent with all running. They started running the schemes a little too late to get the run game going. But luckily, the defense came out and helped us and built us out, built the offense out and helped us get this big-time win. T.J. Watt and Alex Highsmith are very good players, very dynamic players. This defense was all over the place. It was like Oprah um, Winfrey. She'd go out there and give cars out. we like, you get a sack. You get a sack. You get a sack. We had T.J. Watt. The Marvin Lee, Leal got a sack. Who was that sack? Um, Larry Ogunjobi. Alex Highsmith got a strip sack. Um, Riley had a sack. We came up the, the play before. He missed the sack on Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson got the ball off. And the next play, he came up and made the play and got the sack. A lot of guys got a sack. Um, T.J. Wyatt was on. Um, not T.J. Wyatt. Deshaun Watson got sacked. Was it six times? He got sacked six times. He, he fumbled the ball. He threw a pick six. Um, David Joku fumbled the ball as well. It was just a crazy game. Crazy game, defensive battle for the Steelers. And I started the Steelers' defense in fantasy, so I won by a good margin. They put up 33 points in fantasy. Yes. The Steelers' defense was on one today. Um, T.J. Wyatt and those guys performed well in primetime. You know, we've seen T.J. Wyatt perform greatly in primetime. Remember that strip sack he had against the Seahawks? Big time play here. Just always performing well. And Ice High Smith's counterpart is doing the same thing. And in, even the guys behind them are doing some great things, too. We see her big. Um, making some plays, getting pressures in. And we've seen Golden get a sack as well, getting pressures in. So we have guys who are capable of being starters on other teams, being our guys to rotate in and out. And they're playing well in that in that, in that role. And we just see a lot of guys is we still is missing the match. And this is the defense we came in the season looking for. No, week one, they look, they look like this defense. It was like shell shop. They was on the, like, not bringing, getting pressures in. TJ Wyatt was looking like himself, of course. But everybody else is not really doing what they're supposed to be doing. And now we're seeing everybody kind of merge in. You know, it's prime time. The pressure's on you. You don't want to go. You don't want to start off 0-2. You don't want to lose in your own home. The Steelers have 53 wins now in um, prime time in Monday Night Football. And they also have the longest streak on Monday Night Football. 21 straight wins on Monday Night Football. You don't want to break that streak. You don't want to lose that game. So you went out there and you performed well. And you went out there and got the W for the Steelers Nation. Everybody going crazy. They was chanting Fire Matt Canada in the crowd, too. I know Coach Tomlin and those guys heard it. I love Coach Tomlin. He's an amazing coach. Future Hall of Fame coach, 17 years here. Um, amazing coach, Super Bowl champion, all that stuff. But sometimes you just got to put your pride aside and say, you know, I made a mistake in bringing Matt Canada in. Let me go ahead and let him go out the door. Let him go, let him, let him, let him go out the door. You know, when we, when we um, play the Raiders, I think it's in Oakland. Not Oakland. It's in uh, Las Vegas. We're going to leave him in Las Vegas. <laughs> and most likely he's going to be probably the coordinator still by this week. But you never know what can happen. Still is really on fire in the guys through the season. But if it get too bad, you might have to say, you know what, give him the boot. But, yes, with the Steelers, defense look amazing. It's a big-time win on prime time. I remember the Mark um, made the video on Stonehenge Australia. We was doing a live stream collab. He said, the, the, the Browns win, will the world end? Well, I guess we would never know because the Steelers won it, and they um, got the W. It was a big-time win. My game MVPs, I usually do the video on the following day, but I'm excited to do it today because usually it's on Sunday, maybe on Monday, but this is Monday right now, so I might as well do it today. My game MVPs. Um, I'm gonna give it to, of course, TJ Wide and Ty Smith. Those two guys were the reason we won. Uh, of course, of course, other guys contributed as well, but those guys made some big time key plays. The fumble return for a touchdown. Um, and of course, Alex High Smith getting the strip sack and also getting the pick six as well. So those guys made some key plays. Hopefully, Nick Fitzpatrick is cool. I know Jesse Johnson. They say he's out for four weeks. Cam Hayward. We don't know how long he's gonna be out. Things said six. They said five to six weeks, six to eight weeks. So around that range. So we're we'll gonna see how things pan out. But the offense, I get things, something clicking. But you go home with a win, you celebrate the win, and get back to business because we got another primetime game. And I'll see you guys on that game, too, as well, on a live watch party. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to have my NFL Week 2 review of the season. And I'm also going to have my game picks on Wednesday, so tune in for that. But it's a big-time win for the Steelers Nation. And let's go, Steelers. Let's go. And that's all I got. Peace out.